happy Sabbath, everybody. Sabbath. All right, shall we begin Sabbath school with a silent word of prayer? Amen. Last Sabbath, we were looking at the track of truth and the track of error and how these, these two tracks run side by side. And she says that these two tracks will look as one by those whose minds are not worked by the Holy Spirit. So we need our minds worked by, by God's Spirit so that um, we might see light as light and darkness as darkness. And called sin by its right name. So we're gonna continue in this um in in this in this in this route basically. And um we're gonna look at a principle in which the Lord is trying to show this and and this rule um rule that, that God is showing for the things that are soon soon to come. So evangelism, we're starting the first quote, evangelism five eighty Nine, paragraph one, reading the bold. It says, Error cannot stand alone and would soon become extinct <clears throat> if it did not fasten itself like a parasite upon the tree of truth. Error draws its life from the truth of God. Next bold, the parasite of error also bears its own fruit. It makes manifest that its character is diverse from the plant of heavenly origin. So you have these two trees and these two fruits, basically, and these two tracks. Next quote, we read this last week, and this is what um, I was speaking of a few, mo few moments ago. So the track of truth, 1SM202.2, the track of truth lies close beside the track of error. And both tracks may seem to be one to minds which are not worked by the Holy Spirit, and which, therefore, are not quick to discern the difference between truth and error. Um... And 1T293, paragraph 1, all these quotes we, we read last Sabbath, just the bold. Satan has ever been ambitious to counterfeit the work of Christ and establish his own power and claims. Jump down to the sentence that has the bold. Satan came, came, Satan came to Christ in the wilderness in the form of a beautiful young man, more like a monarch than a fallen angel, with scripture in his mouth. Said he, it is written. Our, our sa suffering Savior met him with scripture saying, it is written. So Satan will counterfeit the work of Christ, and Satan will come with a thus saith the Lord, but pervert it. He would, he would only use so much just so that his, his ends can be met. But, but we must see that, this is, um, see that this is Satan and must meet Satan with a thus saith the Lord. For this is how Christ met him, and Christ is our pattern, and, he, and we have to meet Satan the same way Christ has met Satan. So, we're going to look at, um, we're going to look at the same text again from Isaiah 14. Um, speaking about Lucifer, read ver we're reading verse 13 um, and 14. It says, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will, send, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. So we have here Satan um, trying to make his trying, trying to make his own what? We said this last week. It says the throne and what? What does verse 13 say? Church. Church. Yes. Amen. He's trying to make a false church and state because the true one in is the one in heaven where you have this church amen his his own false system church and state um okay okay now going forward if you're a herald 
It says, the man, is, the man of sin has instituted a false Sabbath, and the professed Christian world has adopted this child of the papacy, refusing to obey God. The Satan leads men and women in a direction opposite to the city of refuge. And for Satan to counterfeit and to, and to deceive man from the city of refuge, what counterfeit would, would he have to put up? A false what? A false city of refuge. So Satan comes in the form of man on this earth. And what she's speaking of here is the son of law crisis. Speaking in, in of this, of the fifth beast. And and sets up this false city of refuge. So, 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 now, so now the man of sin will look as this city of refuge, but it's actually a false city of refuge. The true city of refuge is Christ. And another quote, she says, the church is the city of refuge as well. But that's a, it's a, um, a separate thought. Next bold. The enemy of all good has turned the signpost around so that it points, it points, it points t -t to the path of disobedience as the path of happiness so so now satan puts up his own signpost as well christ has signposts and signposts for our time are way marks these are our signposts but satan puts up his own signpost and the signpost also is the sabbath and he puts up sunday and he exalts sunday as a path of happiness when it's a path of what destruction, destruction disobedience and we have to understand it um, from God's word, from a thus saith the Lord. Okay. So, in the U.S., we're looking for a son-in-law that, that will come. And what powers will he use here? It's church and state, but who, who fulfills these, these, um, yes, amen, yeah. Yeah, amen, yes. Who is, is yes within the United States okay Protestants yes and they're following the dictates of who their, their mother amen yes Rome so we have the Protestants and now who is the arms to this this church amen it's the United States it's all things that is there not anything new? All things we already know. So, Satan has his spiritual army on earth, and he has his literal army on earth. And his spiritual army is the Protestants, the Protestant church. Because Christ has a spiritual army and a literal army as well. And Satan is just making a counterfeit to, to the system of Christ. And his spiritual army is the Protestants. His literal army is the arms of the church the state power of the, the United States. You see this in the time of from 538 to 1798. In the 1260, it was the spiritual army that Satan had was the man of sin. Uh, it's, it's the Pope. But his arms was France, Clovis since 496. <clears throat> Understand? Okay, great. But we know this is a counterfeit. Therefore, God must have his own, correct? Has his church, and he has his state. Um, I won't say state so much. I just actually I'll do a uh, change uh, from state because I'd rather say arms. The arms of this power. The arms of this power. Yes, but yeah. We'll we'll see why. <coughs> yes. Okay. So now, at this time, who is God's church? The little praying company. This is God God's church. And now, the arms of this church would be who because the the spiritual fights this spiritual and this literal fights this literal correct amen so the lord uses islam to punish the united states for putting forth these laws and i'm going to explain other points as well as we go on because you know that 
Islam was raised up in the 1260 to go and deal with this power as well. Because, you know, the flesh fights with flesh. This is all flesh. But however, Satan has to counterfeit. Satan counterfeits the work of, work of God. So, so he will have to put forth a spiritual army for all, all men to go and worship after as well. So that, so that, so that he, can, he can look as close as, as, um, as to God. But we know that he will not be. <clears throat> now, have Isaiah 61 verse 6. All right, but we, we see this point here, correct? Okay. Isaiah 61 verse 1. But ye shall be named the what? The priests of, priest of the Lord. Men shall call you the what? The ministers of our God. So now, this is talking about the, the, the wise, the righteous, shall be priests and ministers of of the Lord. This is the, the church. <clears throat> now, we're going to read what Moses says. If I wet my what? Glittering sword and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. So now, right here we have God's church, the LPC, and his sword, the arms that go forward and cut down those who, who, who go forward to persecute God's people. As was in the 1260, so shall it be in the 1260 and the son of law crisis. So, um, so we know that the kingdom of God's kingdom is all, is all a spiritual kingdom. But however, the Lord uses sin to punish sin. He uses the flesh to go in battle with the flesh because Satan's kingdom is what? Is... Is earthly, yes, but Satan's kingdom is divided against itself. Satan will fight himself. His 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 own angels don't um they're they're not one with with, with Satan himself. Amen, yes. And Satan's kingdom is all flesh, but to copy Christ's kingdom, he must have the same flesh and spirit kingdom to go and copy Christ, but it's all flesh. It's a counterfeit. He wants to deceive. Page of Prophets, 728, paragraph 1, says, His restraining power, this his is God's, His restraining power will be in a measure removed from the agencies of evil so that a train of circumstances will arise which will what? Punish sin with sin. We know that Islam is, is a false religion and, and Islam is from Satan himself. But however, the Lord uses Islam to go and punish Satan. So Satan is fighting Satan. Okay. Now. Now we're going to look at Abraham's two sons. Because we're going to see this same. We're going to see some of these same things. Within here. So I just want to put this. This illustration up here first. And. And hopefully that we. We follow this. As we um, so that as we go along, we can follow the rest. So we know that the arms here is Satan's kingdom, but the Lord um, punishes sin with sin. The flesh fights the flesh. So this, the Lord uses this power so that His church might have um, what's the word? Might have might have some some sort of peace so that they can go and study God's word. And Islam comes up to go and distract these powers basically from um from God's church. You understand? Okay. <clears throat> so now we're gonna look at Abraham's sons. Okay. Can I read it from verse from verse Galatians four, verse twenty two to twenty six. Yes. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondman and the other by a free man. The who but he who was of the bondman was born out of the flesh, and the he of the free one is the Christ promise. Which things are an allegory for these are two covenants, the one covenant Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem which now is and Jerusalem, which is above, which is above, is free, which is the mother of the soul. 
Okay, stop. So, Abraham has these two sons. So, I'll just put Abraham. And who are the two sons of Abraham? Isaac and who? Ishmael. All right. If you know the answer, speak up with confidence. Isaac and Ishmael. This is Abraham's two sons. We're just going over going over his literal two sons. Okay. But and one is and one was born of the bondwoman, which is who? Ishmael. And then the other was born of the free woman, which is who? Isaac. Okay. All right. And it says that, verse 24, it says, um, it says that Hagar is which, which mount? Sinai. Okay. We know Hagar is the mother of Ishmael, and this is that bondwoman. So it's this Sinai. And Isaac is from where? Um, Isaac's mother, rather. The mother is from where? Heaven. Amen. It's Jerusalem. Yes. Heaven knew Jerusalem. Or you have Mount Zion and Mount Sinai. These are these two mountains. So we're just taking literally what it says and just mapping out what, what God's word says. So now let's go to Galatians 4 verse 29. It says, but, but as then he, he, excuse me, but as then he, that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit even so it is now all right so who was born after the flesh in this in this scenario because you just have to go back to genesis um about 17 16 17 18 you'll see 16 17 rather yes ishmael ishmael is the one after the what flesh okay <clears throat> And Isaac's after the what? Spirit. Because this was, he, um, Christ came from this line, not from this line. Okay. So we just mapped out literally Abraham's two sons, Isaac and Ishmael, bond woman, free woman, um, Sinai, Jerusalem, um, spirit, flesh. Okay. All right. I'm not, I'm not going to read the whole of the next paragraph just for time, but can I have a reader for the just for the bold portion. <clears throat> it says, this is Advent Review of Sarah of Herald, June 19th, 1900, page 328, paragraph 4, and this is, uh, I think, James White. Now remember that Hagar, the mother of this wild-ass man, represents the covenant from Sinai, and her son who was born after the flesh, this wild man, represents the children of that covenant from Sinai. Okay. So, Ishmael represents what people? It says right there, amen. The children of that covenant from where? Sinai. Okay. <clears throat> so, Ishmael and Israel in Galatians 4 are showing one and the same thing, correct? Because this is what the Bible connects for us. And it says... The covenant from where? Sinai. Sinai. All right. Therefore, we saw in Galatians 4 that um, Ishmael, showing Mount Sinai, is showing that he, he's the children of what? The flesh. Amen. Yes. Of the flesh. So Ishmael and Israel, Israel at Mount Sinai, when he come under the old covenant, is showing the children of the flesh um actually no I don't have to put two go ahead oh yes 
Amen. Yes, yes. Yes. Amen. Okay. So Ishmael and Israel are showing children of the flesh. It's from Galatians 4. We're following thus far? Amen. Amen. The bond woman. Amen. Is your end. Amen. And and the Bible says, if you are Christ, you are who seed? Abraham seed. Which seed? Isaac. So you're not Ishmael seed. So there's two seeds we have to see. And these are the two seeds, Isaac and Ishmael. And if you're Christ, you're Abraham seed, Isaac. Because Isaac, Isaac went on the cross as well, correct? Yeah. So now, and it's showing forth Christ going on the cross. Because Isaac offered himself as a willing um, sacrifice, just as Christ did. Was that a hand, Sante? Yeah. Um, in Job 14, it says that man that is born of a woman is a few days of birth. Mm -hmm. Job 14 says that man that is born of a woman is a few days of birth. Mm -hmm. Job 14 says that man that is born of a woman is a few days of birth. Mm -hmm. Job 14 says that man that is born of a woman is a few days of birth. Mm -hmm. Job 14 says that man that is born of a woman is a few days of birth. Mm -hmm. Job 14 says Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking of. Yes, amen. H amen. It made me think of, I think James said, the grass withereth and the flower fadeth. Amen. So, so man, if you're still of the flesh, you're going to fade away. You're going to be gone. But if you're of the spirit, if you're of, if you're of Christ, you're Abraham's seed. Of the spirit, you won't fade away. Because now it made me think about Christ's, Sister White's first vision when she went, went into heaven and she plucked a flower, she said, it will never fade. So that flower is different from the earthly flower. The flower of heaven never fades, but it says the grass withereth and the flower fadeth, the Bible says. The fleshly flower. So, okay. Now, Ishmael, flesh, Sinai. All right. Ishmael and Israel from Galatians 4, they, they show the same thing from the old covenant at Sinai. I'll just let me put that as well. Old, new. And when, I, when I'm writing this, I mean the covenants. Ishmael, old, Christ, um, Isaac, Christ, yes, new. Now go to next quote. Review and Herald looking at Sinai now. Now we're just going to read the bold portion. Okay, I've read it for the bold. Because now we'll see what, she, what, what the Bible means. When it speaks about Ishmael from Sinai, <clears throat> in, in, in one sense, because there's, there's more things you can bring from it, but I'm just using one at this time. But people did not realize the sinfulness of their own hearts, and that without Christ it, is it was impossible for them to keep God's law. <coughs> and they readily entered into covenant with God, feeling that they were able to establish their own righteousness. They declared, All that the Lord has said. Amen. So, they did this in their own strength, correct? Mm -hmm. Therefore, this is what um, this is what Ishmael does as well, because Ishmael leaves his father's house <clears throat> and goes forward and makes a um, ma makes a religion of his own. Now, just when he was just reading, this quote came back to mind, which he, Amen. It's it, it's it's by works. The quote came, comes back to mind. It's talking about um, a legal religion. A legal religion is one that goes forward and try to do it in their in their own strength. Actually, can we go to someone go to six BC ten seventy seven point seven? It's not it's not in the notes. Just this quote came to mind. So because <clears throat> now we'll see because it um, this is directly linking to Galatians three verses six to nine with the with um. With speaking of Abraham, can someone read that first sentence? The spirit of bondage. The spirit of bondage is engendered by seeking to live in accordance with legal religion through striving to fulfill the claims of the law in our own strength. Amen. Okay, you're trying to fulfill the claims of God's law in your own strength. This is what this is what um, 
Ishmael did because it says, the quote says, engendered. And you go to Galatians 4, it says, gendereth to bondage. It's speaking of the same thing. And now Israel at Mount Sinai, they thought they can go forward um, and establish, um, feeling that, yeah, they, they went for trying to establish their own righteousness and their own strength. So Ishmael is showing, showing um, Israel um, at Sinai. When they go forward after the flesh and their own strength. Okay. Now let's go to John 8, verse 15. It's in the notes. It says, ye judge after the what? Flesh. I judge no man. It says, next bold. Um, as you can, someone read 31 to 34 for me, please. <clears throat> Sorry. <coughs> Okay, they said that they're Abraham's seed. Are they right? Yes, they are right. They are literally Abraham's seed. They're of the flesh. So the scribes and Pharisees, the priests are, as the Bible says, I think it's the priests and the scribes. But yes, the priests and the scribes said that they're Abraham's seed. And they are. They're literally Abraham's seed. Now, can someone read verse 37 to... To 44, please. And you said you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do, do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's, Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. Okay, stop there, actually. So now, Christ just said that they are not Abraham's seed, but which one of his seed are they not? Spirit. Of the spirit, amen. They are, they are of Abraham's seed, flesh, but they're not of Abraham's seed, spirit. And we have to recognize that 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 Christ is showing sh showing these two seeds here. Continue on, brother West. You do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Ye are of your father the devil. Ye are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father will ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Amen. So now, amen. It's showing that they, they need this, this new birth. That is what they needed. But they're after the flesh and they're going for it. And, and the flesh wars against the spirit. This is what Ishmael did to Isaac. <clears throat> and therefore, it's also telling, telling us then, that Israel did it at Sinai as well. That when they went forth in, the sh in, the, in their flesh, in their own strength, they, they warred against the spirit. Because a few weeks later, they made the golden calf. Which they showing that they're warring against the spirit, obviously. Okay. Can okay, I read it for next quotes? Next two quotes, 5 BC, 1136, paragraph 6 and 7. that which I have seen with my father, 
first continued, and do you do that which you have seen with your father? The two classes are plainly brought to view in these words, the children of light who obey the truth and the children of darkness who reject the truth. Okay, so she tells us plainly that these are these two, two classes here. Now, in Signs of the Times, August 29th, 1900, she's now commenting on what we just read in John 8. And then it says, the bold, part, bold portion says, the Jews were, were indeed Abraham's seed according to the what? Right. To the flesh. But they manifested a spirit very different from the spirit of righteous Abraham. By their unbelief and persistent rejection of truth, they disinherited, they disinherited, inherited it, inherited themselves abraham obeyed god and was counted to him for righteousness by their works the jews showed that they bore no relationship to abraham so they're not abraham's seed at all they're not of this seed but they're fully of the seed of ishmael okay so now we just made a connection the bible just made the connection that ishmael and israel are one and the same they're they're of this one class of the flesh the old, they're under the bondwoman, and it's and they're under this the, the old covenant at Sinai. Therefore, now with what we will soon meet um, at at the next waymark, we will we will we will see the workings of Islam as well. Therefore, we we must be receiving light upon 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 this next thing that will happen. But we know in God's word, we see Islam by Ishmael or the wild ass. But there has, there, there has to be more ways to see Islam in God's word. And I believe this is one of the ways showing Ishmael and Israel because the Bible connects them together. So when you see um, Israel going out in the flesh, literally with their literal swords in their hands, they're going to cut down men. It is showing forth, it, it, it can show forth Islam attacking as well. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll read, re read on and, and we have to see both. The, we have to see these two tracks. We have to understand these two tracks, the flesh and the spirit. We have to discern them both and know what, what, what they teach. Amen. Also internal and external. That's another one. Yes. Because when you when you look at what Islam done in the past when they fought against the papacy, they're following the same rules as Israel. And we will read these things. And the reason being is the next quote. We'll see. Page of the Prophets, <clears throat> 71, paragraph 3. Speaking of Cain and Abel. Can I read? Can I have a reader for the first sentence? Okay, so Cain built a what? An altar. And Abel built a what? Okay, and they, and they both brought what? A sacrifice. All right. It says, Abel, um, actually, can I read it for, yeah, just, just go, on, go on throughout the quote, please. Okay, stop there. So Abel brought a lamb according to the Lord's direction. <clears throat> and Cain brought something that was of his own hands, of his own flesh to go and exalt, him, to go and exalt himself. He wanted to go and bring forth a legal religion. This, um, he was going for in the spirit of bondage as, as had Ishmael and as had the priests and scribes in John 8. So now, Page of Prophets 72, paragraph 4 said Cain had the same opportunity of learning and accepting these truths as had Abel. So Cain and Abel had the same teachings. From who? From their father, Adam. Amen. Next bold says, Abel chose faith and obedience, Cain unbelief and rebellion. So they both have the same teachings, but they take two different routes. As here, Abraham. Abraham is the father, correct? Because the Bible says Abraham is the father of us all. 
Abraham is his father, and these two children had the same teachings, correct? At, at age 13, Ishmael was what? Circumcised. Showing that he received the same teachings as had Isaac. They both had the same teachings. Amen. Genesis 14 tells, uh, yeah, Genesis 14 says that Abraham, is it 14? Yes, commanded, Abraham commanded his household. It's not 14, what is it? 18, yes. Yes, Genesis 18, it says that Abraham commanded his household. And his household are these two sons, Isaac and Ishmael. And they both had the same teachings. So, let's go to 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 to 5. Are we following thus far? We're seeing it's just the same things. It's, a, it's just showing the same, the same two tracks, spirit and the flesh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and ah, amen. And Leo, Leah was the one that was hated. Mm -hmm. Amen. Ah, that's nice. That's a nice thought. He was the first. Mm -hmm. Leah was first. R Rachel. Okay. Okay. But you can see much things from that from that truth as well from from those two those two two women. So Second Corinthians ten verse three. We just said that they here are of the flesh. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not what? War, War after the flesh. And this, is speak, this is Paul speaking of those who are following Christ. Those who are of Abra those, those who are Abraham's seed. Christ is of, um, from the lineage of, lineage of Isaac. Not a literal, but spiritual lineage. For the weapons of our warfare are not flesh, carnal. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So, the weapons of Ishmael are what? Carnal. So, the flesh. And weapons of, of Isaac are spiritual. <laughs> so, both of these who are the flesh... Weapons are carnal. Both of their weapons are carnal. Ishmael and Israel. So now, now we'll look at the teachings in which both Isaac and Ishmael received. Let's go to Deuteronomy 20, verse 19 and 20. It's not literally them, but, but Moses. This is um, of the teachings of Moses because this is the same things. The teachings of Moses were the same teachings of Abraham, same teachings of Adam, and they all were taught of God. All right, it says, When thou shalt besiege a city a long time, in making war against it to take it, thou shalt not destroy the trees thereof by forcing an axe against them. For thou mayest eat of them, and thou shalt not cut them down. For the tree of the field is man's life to employ them in the siege. Only the trees which thou knowest that be not trees for what? For meat thou shalt destroy and cut them down, and thou shalt build bulwarks against the against city that maketh war with thee until it be subdued. So the Lord commanded Israel under the old covenant to go and do what? Cut down, cut down the trees that, that don't have what? Fruit, that don't, the trees that are not for meat. But the trees that do have fruit, what? Keep them. So the trees that don't have fruit, cut it down. Trees that have fruit, Keep it. This is this is the barren fig tree. This is why the Lord cursed it, because he's following the same things in which the Lord has said from the beginning. So this is Israel here. 
under the old covenant receiving instruction from the Lord. So now let's go to SSP 166, paragraph 1. This is Stephen Haskell. SSP is Story of the Seer of Patmos. Page 166, paragraph 1. Okay. Can I have a reader for this quote, please, from the beginning? This is speaking of, um, as you, you'll see when we go on. Destroy no palm trees, nor burn any fields of corn. Cut down no fruit trees, nor do any mischief to cattle, only such as you kill to eat. As you go on, you will find some religious persons who live retired in monasteries and propose to themselves to serve God that way. Let them alone, and neither kill them, nor destroy their monasteries. And you will find another sort of people that belong to the synagogue of Satan, who have shaven crowns, be sure you cleave their skulls and give them no quarter so they either turn Muhammadan or pay tribute. Amen. So now, the caliph of Islam, of Islam at this time says, destroy no palm trees, nor burn any fields of cord, cut down no what? Fruit trees. And now, this is the same thing which God told Israel when they go forward into war and now now this caliph is telling his men the same things when you go out into war cut down do not cut down the trees that have fruit understand their weapons are carnal because the same thing with israel when they went out into a literal battle with their literal swords in their hands cut down no fruit trees now islam when they go out into battle cut down no fruit trees both hmm Amen. Yes. Nine. So. So you see that they have the same instruction. But now we're going to look at John because John does the same thing. In Matthew three. Because and they, they are both doing the same exact thing, both the flesh and the spirit, because now it says Matthew three, um, verse eight, bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. So is, so is John following what, what God said? Yes. The trees that don't have fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. So those who are of the spirit... Cut down, um, cut down the trees that have no fruit. But Islam, who are the arms of the Lord, cut down the trees that have no fruit. Understand? Those who align themselves under um, Satan, they will be cut down by Islam. But the church will perform doctrines that will cut down all false doctrines. And, and Islam moves only when God's people say it's Christ right in the ass in the triumphal entry. And you see Revelation 19, Christ is riding on a what? A white horse. He's going forward and he has a sword in his hand to go and cut down the nations because they bore no fruit onto him, onto repentance. And we see at the end of Revelation 9, it says that, um, I'm paraphrasing, a rough paraphrase, that they brought forth um, no... And, and they did not repent. Let me just read it. Sorry. Let me not. Yes. Neither have they repented of their murderers and their sorceries. And amen. I think it's verse like 20 or around there. Revelation 9 verse 20. And, and the rest of the men which, which, which were not killed by, by, by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not work should they excuse me that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk and this happens to them because they drink 
drink of the falsehoods of the Protestant church. So those who drink of that cup shall, shall receive the plagues, the Lord's cup, and they shall be cut down by this power. But God's people will do the same things as Moses said, um, as we read, when we go besiege a city, cut down the faults, the, the trees that have no fruit. Understand? Go ahead. Gold and silver. Mm -hmm. And they also literally were drinking out of the Lord's cups. Um, oh, yes, that is true. Yes. Yeah. And then afterwards, the judgment was brought upon them. Amen. By who? By um, Cyrus. Which is a symbol of who? Of Islam. Amen. So, so now Cyrus comes in and cuts down all those false trees. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. The angel comes from the east, um, the seal. <coughs> Okay, now come down to a close, the last few things we'll read. Deuteronomy 20, verse 10 to 12. Now we're going to see the same, the, the same things which we just saw just now, when um, in verse 19 and 20, where both Isaac and Ishmael are doing these said things, because, because they have the same father. But one does it in the spirit, one does it in the flesh. Understand? Amen, yes. Amen. Amen. There's a separation there yeah, first. God had to make that separation, mm -hmm. put them out. When they become a part of Babylon, they mm -hmm. do that sin. Because once they go out, they're no longer a part of the church. And then God could have Satan. They're no longer under God's protection. Amen. So they could, Satan could now give them the same life. Amen. Because now sin punishes sin. Yeah. And just as you were saying, you have the spiritual army against this spiritual army. You have the church against this church. Now, the arms against the arms. But these arms attacks this whole thing because it's all flesh. Because flesh fights with flesh. Because some of those who are in, in this false church will be smitten by Islam as well. Because they may very well, well be, be in the same cities or areas when Islam attacks. And they will perish with, with, um, with, those, those, with the arms of, of Satan, basically. You understand? Because this church is all flesh. And flesh which just only brings death. So Deuteronomy 20, verse 10 to 12. Can I read it for it? Gary, can you read this please? It's three verses. Amen. So, when you come come to the city, you have to proclaim peace. And and now, if the city wants peace as well, then they they now they now serve you. And now, um, this this can be seen in all of Judges chapter one, Judges chapter one from the teens all the way down to to, to the thirties. You see see all these things happening. But if they do not make peace, then what? You war against it. Okay. So now we'll see the same thing that Abraham said unto his children. We'll see now Ishmael, this wild-ass man, doing it. Can I read it for SSP 166.2? Okay, stop there. And this first sentence is speaking about in paragraph 1 in, in, which, in which we read, where it says that, You'll see some in the church, um, and um, 
you'll s see some in the church that that. Yes, amen. Don't, yes, do not kill them. And this is that group. So, so, so we see and know that if you're a part of the truth of this, this church, Islam will not touch us. Because Islam only will touch those who are of Satan's church, who are following, um, following, following the, the man of sin, the papacy, because the daughters are following the mother. It says th those, those who ha have the shaven crowns cleave off their skull. They have to be cut down. Go ahead. Ultimately, what it is is, is it Satan. Mm -hmm. It is, yes, in one sense, it is Islam, but we know the four winds is... is it's is, all Satan's kingdom. All, yeah, it's all Satan's kingdom. Amen. So, and, it's, and it's these, mm -hmm. these, these famines, these pestilences, these, um, these earthquakes, these natural disasters. All these things will not fall upon God's people if um, we are safe in the city of refuge, which is Amen. the word. Amen. So, and we know with Ishmael in Genesis 16, it says that every man will be against him and his hand against who? Every, man. every man's. So, the East, Islam, will be against North, South, and West. And North, South, and West will be against the East. Because this is all the fleshly kingdom. This is Satan's kingdom. But the Lord, allowed, the Lord uses um, Islam to go and destroy those who are not following God's law. Continue on, Brother West. Tongue-tree priests and monks were to be slain without mercy, unless they accepted the faith of Muhammad and paid tribute. Amen. Syria was soon wholly in the hands of the S Saracens. Saracens. Okay. So, so the priests and the monks says they were to be slain without mercy unless they accepted the faith of Muhammad and paid what? Tribute. This is what Moses said in Deuteronomy 20. If they, if they, um, turn then then they shall serve you and pay tribute but if not make war against them That's it. so ishmael is following the same thing and then after this next quote we'll see how this isaac is following the same thing but in the spirit they're following the very same works isaac and ishmael one's doing it in the spirit one's doing it in the flesh and when you go and yeah ishmael and israel they're all spirit the weapons are carnal all right now, can I have a reader for the, the bold portion of the next paragraph? This is just a second witness to what we just read. Wherever... Amen. It's the same thing that was said. That you have to pay, pay tribute... Or you'll die. This is what um, this is what Moses said in um, what we read above. So now we're seeing this is what the children of flesh does. This is Islam. Now we're going to see now here what God's people will do. But they will not do it with literal swords, knives, guns, fists, bricks, whatever um, it is. We're not literally doing it with our actual, we're not doing it with our fists. We'll take up the word of God. And show men the truth. And the Bible says the word of the, word of the Lord is a two-edged sword. So this sword will pick up and will cut down those trees that, that do not bear fruit. Matthew 10, um, verse 11 to 15. Can I read it for these last texts here, please? And into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who in it is, is worthy. And they and there abide till you go thence. And when you come into a house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. And if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not deceive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of, off your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Amen. So now this is Christ speaking um, towards the, the 12, telling them when you go out and preach, those who accept it, accept them. But if they do not accept it, dust, off the, the, um, dust, dust the dust off of your, your feet and leave that city. And now that, that city is, is now condemned. It's just as Sodom and Gomorrah. And what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? 
fire and brimstone correct and now on this ass here what comes out what comes out of um what comes out the mouth fire and brimstone so once once the lord puts this message in our mouth and we speak that word and and if men reject it that city will be destroyed because they have now just rejected light they have just just fought against the message that was exactly for their time that would have saved them and this is a fearful thing to have to be the mouthpiece of god because it's not of man it's not of my flesh it's not of me or of anybody in this room it is literally it's just god's word and all we're doing all all we're doing is being a fit vessel for God and speaking the same things he is just saying. That's it. So it's not us speaking. It's God speaking. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the Lord. But there's mercy in his hands. So um, I pray this was plain and that we can see this rule plainly. Because as we go along, we're going to look at this, this point here where Ishmael, Ishmael, um, Ishmael is Israel. They're both showing the same thing. When Israel goes out into war with their literal sword. It's also showing Islam going out to same um, going out with their sword, but it's but that is after men have rejected the truth from um from from the Lord's mouthpiece. So that being said, shall we close off in prayer? Heavenly Father, Lord, Lord, we give thanks for this day of rest. Help us, Father, to to fight self and sin. Save us from from self, as you may create us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us, O Lord. Father, there are these things are are grand truths, and Lord, we just ask you may help us to keep pace with with the, this light and to live forth all that you have shown, O Lord. Help us to die to self and to um, lift up Christ in in all that. We do, O oh Lord, and we ask all these things in Christ's name we pray. Amen.